Hello and welcome to another MTD podcast. I will be your host and I'm sat with two gentlemen from two companies you might think are competitors but actually have a premium partnership. So Andy, can you introduce yourself and the company you work for? I can, uh, thanks Tom. So my name's Andy Fifield and I work for Mitator UK. And Chris? My name's Chris Sargent and I work for Renishaw PLC. People might look at, at you guys and your companies and think, aren't they competitors? But you actually have quite a strong and long lasting collaboration. So can you tell me a little bit about it? Yes, so uh, since Mitatory started selling CMMs in the UK, uh, we've, we've used Renishaw probe systems um, and that's continued to this day. So a long standing uh, collaboration between the two uh, companies and a very successful one. Now, Chris, we talk about long standing, but how many years are we talking? That's right, so it's over 30 years in the UK and uh, Mitatoyo are a premium partner of Renishaw. Any frame that you buy from Mitatoyo with an indexing head will have Renishaw equipment on it. Indexing head, I actually want to talk about your Revo um, probe system. Um, so what is it and, and why is it so beneficial for customers compared to older versions? So Revo itself is our new um, flagship product if you like with um, A and B angles in it so it's a five axis head that takes into account the, the X, Y and Z of the three axis CMM but introduces that A and B angle um, in order to scan much faster um, than the three axis because on a three axis frame you're reliant on moving a large CMM about the machine volume uh, and that is intrinsically much slower because you've got the, the dynamic uh, movement of the machine uh, whereas moving the A and B angles of the head is a much smaller entity and you can move it that much faster. How many points can you take per second? So we can take 4,000 points a second and we can scan at 500 millimetres a second depending on the, the feature size. So surely that must be quite, well, beneficial for customers but also the time savings on that must be quite, quite large. Absolutely, so when compared to PH10 or other, th other three axes CMMs, um, you can scan 80% uh, faster and you can cut your run times down by 50%. What's your system like and how easy is it for somebody who has never run a CMM to actually get to grips with your software? Yeah, so it's interesting. So Mitatoya have our M Cosmos software, which, which our customers know well um, and, and has been long standing. Um, it's a software that's been exposed to a lot of uh, customers. Um, a lot of a lot of measurement challenges, and we've built various functions in um, to, to cater for for the requirements of our customers and their components. And we also have to build in functions to cater for the equipment that we're using for the measurement. So in this case, a CMM um, and and the various probe heads that we might get from Renishaw. Um, so as new technology comes along, we build in new functions, uh, and our software lab, lab have done a great uh, a great job of building those things in. Um, so yeah, pe people are interested. How how do you use uh, a Revo probe? What does the software um, do to make it easier? Um, and we've built various tools in, um, which which obviously we can we can demonstrate to our customers. We can train them how to use them, um, and our customers with Revo heads have found it to be very uh, very easy to program. Um, it's very flexible, um, has a lot of lot of good capability, um, and and that's really down to the software and its uh, its its function. Can Fred in his shed get one piece of the software and then your UK leading aerospace automotive companies. Is there room in the software to build with? Yes, that's right. So our, our software is modular. Um, so um, as we described, we're, we're exposed to lots of different components, um, lots of different uh, use case scenarios, lots of different um, customers. Um, and so what we can do is, is build up um, the, the modules in the software to make sure it's capable of doing everything um, that's required, but also that you don't need to buy parts of the software that you don't need. Um, so so uh, it's, uh, um, it's very flexible like that and, uh, and it's, you know, we're trying to deliver a, a cost-effective solution to the customers and that's what, that's what that modular nature gives us. Is there sort of um, a mindset that Mitotoyo are just for? the big guys like your aerospace and your automotive industries. Do you do stuff for everybody? Is it cost effective for everybody? <clears throat> we're, we're cost, we try to be cost effective uh, for everybody. That, that's the target. Um, so um, uh, it's true, we, we do uh, supply into um, the, the biggest uh, aerospace companies in, in the country, um, but we also supply to 
small subcontract facilities that are doing quite specialist activities um, and we, we work with the customer to deliver a cost effective solution um, that's right for them. So, so really any industry and any customer um, is, is uh, it's possible for them to come to Mitotoyo and get what they want. You've got the Revo system for Mitotoyo, but you have other sensors and other probes that can be fitted to a Mitotoyo COMM if I don't need the, the Revo 5-axis head. Yes, so we have um, PH10 heads and PH20 heads, which uh, PH10 is a three-axis scanning probe uh, head with, uh, with uh, SM25 probes. Uh, the PH20 is a five-axis touch trigger head, uh, which again uses that five-axis speed, but is, is touch trigger only. Uh, we have an RSP2, so our scanning um, probe, and we have a surface finish module as well, uh, and we also have a, an ultrasonic probe. Um, so we have all of these in the different rack and it's, it's a, as described it's a multi-sensor system and um, we can be scanning with our RSP2 just a sort of a standard styli uh, and then we can go to surface finish and we've got lots of different types of modules uh, that can get into all sorts of um, places from just on the surface to even in like valve guides in, in the automotive industry um, and we can take surface finish scans wherever which is great because you can program them and an operator can't say, oh, I don't like the look of that, I'm just going to scan that bit. It's actually programmed, so usually the machinists on the machine tool when programming know where the bad surface finish is going to be. So we can program to check those areas specifically and they'll be programmatically uh, scanned every time. Uh, and then we've also got our ultrasonic probe, um, which, will um, which will take a wall thickness measurement, uh, currently up to 20 millimetres, but that's due to increase. Essentially, you're looking at every, everything the machinist will need to measure, you will be able to do with a Renishaw probe. Absolutely, yes. We hope that you'll be able to put a part on and be able to um, measure everything that's required on the drawing to be output. And we're looking at lots of different sensors as well in the future. Now, Chris, I know you actually have one or maybe a few questions for Andy. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you with the floor and... and, and Let's, let's see what information I can learn from, from you guys. Sorry, I, I wanted to just go back. You were, you were talking about how the software will support uh, more of our sensors in the future, uh, and currently does. I wanted to know how it's, how it's licensed and whether you need a new license for each different module that you add, each different sensor, I should say. That's right, yeah. So, so, um, so as I described, we, we tailor um, our, our measurement solution to, to the customer requirements, and we try to make it cost effective. Um, so, so where you describe which probing system we need, we would, we would pick the correct probing system if it's PH10. Um, but if, if we need more capability, more access capability for more complex components, then, then we'd be looking at the Revo. Um, and, and perhaps if there's a surface finish requirement, we'd put the surface finish sensor on. And then like, like, likewise with the software, um, we're driven by the customer needs. So if they need to program from the CAD model, we have a module that allows them to import the CAD model. Um, and, and that part of it's licensed. And if they have um, complex profiles to analyze, then we have a module of the software for that. And this is, this is all licensed um, through, through a software dongle. Um, and, uh, and, and we um, put the package together according to the requirement. Um, other things we have, um, so we have dedicated gear checking, um, and we also have dedicated airfoil software, um, as a for instance. Um, so, so we can build up the different modules um, and license accordingly. Great to get questions from you guys, because obviously, you guys are the experts in your field, so I can do as much research as I want, but I'm never going to know as much as you guys know, so it's always great to hear your questions because it's, it's what hopefully the audience will want to know. How is Revo just so much faster than a conventional contact measurement? Now, I know, we I know we're talking about how fast the... You can only move as fast as... The CMM can move. ...as the base. Yeah. And obviously, you, you then start to get problems with that because... The faster you move the the base, the less accurate it's going to be. I think the um, if if I perhaps no, put, put a bit in from our side as well. Yeah. And so uh, I think um, uh, I think when you when you're constructing a measurement program for a component, um, there's a lot of different aspects to consider, um, and uh, and the flexibility of the Revo um, really helps you um, 
produce a, a measurement program and a measurement solution that's, that's as fast as possible. Um, so the infinitely indexable nature of the head, so the fact that we can, we can go to any angle, sometimes that might mean that we don't have to go and get a, um, a complex, um, what we call a dog leg probe. So we can build up probes with, with, a, with a crank stylus on that we can angle. Um, and on, on uh, indexing heads, you might need that for access. Whereas with the Revo, um, we don't need to go and make a tree change. And so we're not losing time like that. So there's, there's those elements to the speed as well. Um, and then as, as Chris has described, um, for instance, if we're measuring a bore, <coughs> traditionally um, we have to move all three axes of the machine. Um, but with the Revo, we can come in and we can do a very fast, what we call a helical scan. So we can scan round um, using that function in the Revo. Um, and the cycle time savings are, are significant. So when we build all of these things together, at the end of it, the customer gets a much faster uh, solution. Um, so it's, it's, not, it's not just one aspect of it, it's yeah. the real capability of the system. That's right, you point out the infinite angles or something I definitely forgot. Um, and, uh, that was something I was gonna ask about, because I I, that was the, the infinite yeah, points yeah, yeah. was so the, 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 one of the troubles with, with pH 10 was always that you can only index every seven and a half degrees and you have to calibrate each one of those angles. Whereas with Revo, you can just calibrate A0, B0, so straight down. Um, and that calibrates out each one of the individual um, infinite angles. So when you come to inspect different bores, different prismatic features around a part, you don't have had to uh, had to um, calibrate all of those different angles, which can reduce your calibration time dramatically. Um, and it also means that you get much smoother uh, moves around the part, which then cuts down on your runtime because you can inspect a part here, say, and then move around to another feature nice and smoothly instead of having to come out, angle change over, around, and then use, as Andy says, all of the CMM axes to inspect that feature. You just inspect it using the head. Now, obviously, that must make such... I know we've talked about time-saving per part, but if you've got to inspect a production run of parts, these, these smoother angles, not having to calibrate every time you've got to move your probe, the time and the, the cost-saving must be, well, exponential in the end of, at the end of the day because you can just set it... Like you were saying, you can just probe it zero, zero, and then just set it running. What is, what is the bottom limit accuracy on a Revo head? Are we talking microns, tens of microns, or is it, can, can I inspect anything with it and it'll be absolutely perfect? Usually it depends on the framework of the CMM, to be honest with you, and the machine volume and the working volume, but anything, yeah, you can inspect down to sub-micron, dependent on the framework. Because you've, um, Andy, you, at Mitato, you've actually been You've, you've actually been with Revo since the very beginning. So you must believe in this to have it right from the start all the way through and still to this day be using it. That's right. So, um, so Mr. Toy were early adopters of the Revo. So, so we've seen the development and the improvements that have come with it and the extra sensors. Um, and uh, what, what we try to get our customers to focus on <coughs> is the business case. Um, so what's important is that the customer understands for their investment what are we going to get and if, if they need that throughput um, then that's what that's what Revo gives them. Um, I, can, I can give you another another example there is that the um, the time it can take often to move to another operation or another piece of equipment so when we talk about surface finish um, that time um, is actually significant um, in a production cycle um, and if you can just go on to the one dedicated piece of equipment and get everything done in, in one operation with one machine, um, you're really starting to, to get the benefits of, of the flexibility of the kit. I've got one question left, and I promise this isn't to trip anybody up, but what is the future for Renishaw and Mitotoyo? Um, so, so the future is, uh, is more sales. Um, you know, we, we've, uh, we've had... Um, a downturn with COVID, for instance, you know, industry has had, has had a tough time with, with some of the, um, uh, the, the economic climate uh, recently, um, but, but everything's improving um, and um, manufacturing methods are getting more complex. Um, and as manufacturing methods get more complex, we have more difficult parts to measure from our customers. And that's what we like as a challenge. So if we can work with Renishaw and they can keep producing excellent and, and um, innovative probing systems uh, and probe heads, um, then we'll fit them to our machines and we'll, we'll get customers the solutions that they want. That's right. And as <coughs> Andy says, things are getting more and more complicated. So 
very sure we're looking into more and more complex uh, sensors to go on the Revo head. It's going to be that multi-sensor system. So we're going to have more and more different sensors that are going to come out, be available in that rack for you to inspect your parts. And M Cosmos is going to be able to, uh, to program those as well. Well, gentlemen, I, I just want to say a very big thank you. From me, I've learned there's only so much you can do when you research on a night. There's only so many times you can read. So hearing from the industry experts on this, I'll be taking a lot away from this. And I really hope the viewers at home will do the same. So a very big thank you from me for this. Um, if you've liked um, watching and hearing from industry experts, then please leave a comment below on who you would like to hear from next. And again, thank you for watching. Thanks for listening to the MTD podcast. If you found value in this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. Find more episodes on mtdcnc.com.